so here we are for the 10th round of the 1952 Formula Olympic season and we are in Australia at Sandown Raceway. A, a very short track that's got two very long straights, yes, including the start finish line. The question is, who's going to get the gold medal in this Formula 1 track? The F2 races are also here, so let's, without further ado, get into the F2 qualifying. So here we are for the Formula Olympic race um, qualifying for the F2. And the question is, who's going to be first to go out? Jim McGrath, the championship lead, is going to go out first to set a benchmark for everyone else to beat. He is coming to this race with a 13 point lead over second place Pierre Tarufi. Of course, everyone in the, in this race are st has still got enough points up for grabs uh, to catch Jim McGrath. And the only two drivers who are out of contention for the title only two part in the first round. It back is Silverstone. The start the long start finish line. Here he is coming round the start finish line. What's the time for Jim McGrath? He's going his benchmark is going to be 57.3 seconds. A very, very quick time. But what about everyone else? Will they be able to match up to that time? And now Luigi Villa Resi. Um, who doubled DNF in the oval race 57.2 so now he is uh, currently in pole position now he's behind Willie Heeks and just see what now Pierre Tarufi is finally third time and Tarufi is down in seventh place so okay, he's got a couple of drivers ahead of him and that's Willie Heeks and Sam Hanks Despert and Willie Heeks the only drivers to be same time under 58 seconds and they got a podium finish in Le Mans but Apart from that, it's not really done too much this season. As we see, Sam Hanks pushes Billy Heeks off the track. The, well, probably a little bit excessive there from Hanks. But Peter Trophy pushes on, trying to improve his time. Especially since he's trying to... No, he's not. He's going to abandon his time going to the pits. Now, Peter Trophy um, has not done too well qualifying re a couple of rounds and yeah I'm not really sure what's up with Pierre Tarufi's uh, performance either. Feel the rest of the one tenth floor in sector two. Maybe he might improve his time but I don't know if he'll catch Alan Brown but anything's possible. Trinity also comes to the pits to abandon his last lap. Tarufi selling for P7. As we watch Feel the rest now he's 3 tenths down, okay, so it's not going to prove his time, but at least he was closer to his personal best time than most people are uh, where during their session. Okay, so here is the official grid, but of course we need to do the reverse race first. So you see, Brown gets the three points. I'll tie that in just now before I forget. Second place for Luigi Villaresi, who's fourth in the championship. And Jim McGrath, the championship leader, getting the final bonus point. So, with that out of the way, it's now time for the F1 qualifying session before we do the F2 reverse grid race. So here we are for the qualifying session around Sand and Raceway for the F1 uh, drivers. And it looks like Sean Berra is eager to get on the track to set a benchmark for everyone to try and beat. Now what can Sean Berra do? Uh, that everyone else cannot do? Well, we'll find out. Be keen to see how well the Frenchman does. As where is Berra actually? Berra is sixth in the championship so far. He got a second place finish around the oval track, uh, despite being in pole position. He lost the win to Mike Hawthorne, who got the United Kingdom's first ever win in the nation's table. Of course, Team Italy has double DNF the last two races cutting their lead in the nation's table down to 40 points between them and United Kingdom who are now in second position. Jean Barra sent it really wide around the left hander. But then again Jean Barra could always improve his time because 12 minutes around the session and the 12 minute session and the track is very very fast. And Jean Barra passes Rudolf Krauss to set the benchmark time of a 55.1 Sounds pretty fast, but let's see how everyone does in comparison. As we go on board to Giuseppe Farina, and now Chuck Stevenson sent the best lap 54.6, and then Chico Landis in second. 
Wow, Chico Landy, no Josie from Gonzalez. Top in second position. Will he get another two more bo get more bonus points after getting his first ever bonus points in uh, the oval track? So Giuseppe Farina currently down in eighth. What about the championship leader Alberto Ascari? I know. Oh, well, we found Alberto Ascari. He had an ins He's gone off the track. So he went, clearly went wide. Real close. Uh, trying to chase him down. Deuce is on pole. Gazzara second. Landy third. Mans on fourth. Better fit. Oh no, we've had an incident. Gino Bianco and Mike Hawthorne have had an accident. Okay, let's go on board with Hawthorne. See what happened to him. Okay, so he's trying to pass Gino Bianco. Did they touch? Oh, Hawthorne went off the road and crashed into Bianco and both of them off the track. Okay, so that was, that was a big impact there. Chico Lampier is trying to go to second. Alberto Ascari down in 14th position. Ascari is going to be really happy with that. And they'll be really happy with Chuck Stevenson in some pole position. Chuck Stevenson's closed in on uh, both Italian drivers coming in the Drivers' Championship. Now Johnny Clay from his return. Coming home has now got pole position. Johnny Clay out of nowhere after getting suspended for um, some of the offences he uh, incurred in back in Spain. Gene Bianco still stuck off the track, not yet able to go back to the pits yet. Kim Wharton getting um, in seventh position at the moment. Good job to Landy. Now Alberto Sky's gone awfully wide. Uh, Stevenson's third, it's now going to drop down to third. Gonzalez down to fourth. Fifth place Fisher, Mansell sixth, fourth, seventh. Sean Berra now in eighth. The Sky Knights and Tony Allman running you in top ten. So pretty interesting mix up and down the field. Interesting up the field seeing Joy Clay's and Paul, but this but it's really surprising lower down the field seeing a sky free is so low. As Tilda Graffley now pushes the sky down to 10th. Mike Hawthorne's going to put his time, but he's only going to be in 14th. Mike Hawthorne, man who won the last round, and now Rutman's in 5th now. Meanwhile, Claude and Loft, the two drivers who've now never qualified for a race still, are over, the only drivers over a minute. Look. Now, for instance, in 12th, that's been improving his time in 19th. But we'll watch on and see uh, Van der Loof's, uh, performance. Now, in fact, Giuseppe Farina has had an incident somewhere. Giuseppe Farina has gone off. Okay, so he's gone off at the uh, the type left hander. In fact, there's Van der Loof uh, approaching where um, Farina's gone off. Now, Alberto Sky is, is now in the top eight. There's Van der Loof going through the second section really slowly and now coming to the last corner and Van der Loof's gonna give us a well well over a minute doesn't even prove his time so no wonder he's uh now made, now made into the race he's just not that fast and now Van der Loof's been pushed off by Robert Manson a little bit unnecessary but Manson's trying to set the fastest time and Chuck Stevenson's now got the fastest time again. So back into Pogo Stevenson. Uh, Clay's is second, Chico Landy third, Gonzalez fourth, Rutman fifth, Fisher sixth, Manson seventh, Hawthorne eighth, Knights is Ascari, and Ken Wharton rounding off your top ten. And Barbara Ascari, the current championship leader, he's worth noting, and then we're going to see him spin, try and get past. Crespo and doing a massive turn just to get back on the track and he's managed to do it successfully and he's going to go into the pits anyway to abandon the run so hmm. so Wharton's last chance to do well. Rui Fisher is moved up to the fourth now two to, and two of the graphic is into fifth so both Swiss drivers have made the top five. Roger Law improving his time and so is Fritz Ries but Fritz Ries goes into 15th pushing the Belgian down to 16th position. It looks like he's going to be carrying the Netherlands charge once again. He does improve his time but still half a second slower in 18th position. 
Now the game is waiting for Farina to come to the pits while well, he's been sitting there for nearly six minutes. But it doesn't matter because the session is ended, so three points going to Chuck Stevenson. So this will be this his first pull of the season, but it's also the third time he's going to get bonus points. He's got one for second and he's qualified third already. Joy Clays for the second time this season on his return is going to get two bonus points. The last time he scored bonus points was down was all the way back in the Netherlands for the third round. And Chico Landi, the Brazilian, for the first time ever, made the top three and thus he's going to get a bonus point. So amazing performance from Chico Landi beating Rui Fisher and Tula Grafenried for that last point. So, a very interesting session, the biggest disappointment, again the two Italian drivers, the top two drivers in the championship, but they're 10th and 13th in this race. And yeah, I think we are going to head off now to the F2 reverse grid race and we'll see what happens there. So here we are for the Formula Olympic race around Australia. We start with the F2 reverse grid race, of course. Alan Brown, who is on pole position for the main races at the back of the grid, alongside Luigi Villaresi. Willie Hicks, Danny Sapur with the two slowest, so they're on the front row of the grid. What's going to happen in this reverse grid race? Let's find out, as we will focus our attention on Willie Hicks, since he is the man on pole. So here we go, and the race gets underway. Now, and there's a good start there from Dennis Poor. Better start than Willie Hicks, and looks like Dennis Poor is going to take the early lead of this race. Coming down to turn one, Dennis Poor leads Hicks a second, Tarufi third. Uh, have hands stuck, then the two French drivers, then it's the two American drivers, Villaresi and Alan Brown at the back of the field. It's Dennis Poor already pulling up a bit of a gap on Willie Hicks. They're coming down to the left hand, and here goes Pierre Tarufi trying to make the move on Willie Hicks. And it looks like they're just about to take the possession. Oh, going a little bit wide though. So two West Germans drive storm four. Feels like everyone's going to make it through the first lap safely, which is always a good thing that everyone makes it past lap one. Now well, the question is, is he going to be able to get past? He's going to, it looks like he might just about, oh, a little bit shaky there from the two drivers. The hands start going a bit wide, but he, do, he does get back on the track and he does hold on to third place. And it's going to be a fastest lap from Pierre Tarufi, 58.1. Compare to Hans Stark, 1 minute point 0.1. So he's, re oh yeah, so he's really holding up the rest of the field. Or unless it's, um, well, the Heeks is the one doing the holding up. Holding up Trinity on in 5th position. I think it's Andrew Simon now trying to make the pass on Willie Heeks. And look at that, Morris Trinity on manages to make the pass and he makes his way into 4th place. Well, his teammate is stuck in sixth place behind the West German driver. Well, back to Pierre Tarufi though, here he is chasing down Dennis Poor. Coming down to the, the long street and then coming to the, the windy section. Dennis Poor's gone awfully wide, what on earth, Dennis Poor. I'm guessing Dennis Poor must have locked up or something and just lose control of the car. And now Willie Heeks has been passed by Sam Hanks, he's dropped down to seventh position. And look at Sam Hanks saying the fastest lap at 57.8. The only driver to set time underneath, under 58 seconds, so Sam Hanks showing that he is not get, he is determined to chase down Andrew Simon and Morris Trintigong to score some good points in this race. He may be ahead of his teammate, but he wants much more than 6th place, that's for sure. And look at this, it looks like Pierre Tarufi and Dennis Poor. Oh, Pierre Tarufi! Goes wide and takes Dennis Poor off the track and Tier Tarufi goes into the lead of the race. That was a... Hmm, that might be a little bit controversial there. I think it's more sprinting on. Going into the inside of Hans Stuck. And, oh, going a bit sideways there. You can see a bit of damage to the side of Hans Stuck's car. As they make their way over, Hans Stuck gets pushed off by more sprinting on. And it looks like Hans Stuck's about to be sworn by the cars behind them. And in fact, we're going to be contact between Sam Hanks and Andrew Simon there. That's a little bit uh, aggressive between the pair of them. And it looks like Hans Stuck manages to get ahead of Andrew Simon into fifth place. As we're now halfway into this race, lap 9 of 17. Pierre Tarufi leads, Dennis Poor second, Trinity on third, 
Hans sixth, fourth. Sam Hanks fifth. Angie C on sixth. Jim McGrath seventh. Be the rest C eighth. Alan, Alan Brown ninth. And Willie Heeks rounds off the rest of the field. As here comes Sam Hanks trying to make the move on. Hans stuck and Sam Hanks has had a huge off. How has he managed to recover from that? I will not, not know, but let, let's see what happened to Sam Hanks there. That was a that was a very bizarre moment there from Let's go boy, here he is trying to get past Hans Stuck. Going into the inside. I'm guessing it must have been contact for them between getting you nope. Know, yeah, we're contact. How on earth did he manage to keep the car pointing in the right direction? That was some amazing driving there. Here's the Pierre Terufi and Dennis Poo into the pits. So the rest of the, imagine the rest of the drivers are coming into the pits as well. Now can Pierre, Pierre, Pierre Terufi come out in the, in, in the lead of the race or will he have problems with the pit stop? And... Wow! Okay, this is interesting. Hands stuck has come out first and it looks like Willie Heeks and I don't think Willie and Willie Heeks has not pitted so Willie Heeks is staying a lap longer but he stays ahead of his teammate Sam Hanks jumps to third McGrath fourth be the rest he fifth Alan Brown sixth Simon ninth Pira Tarufi from the lead of the race goes all the way back down to eighth that is that is something he did not want to happen to him and yet it's happened Morris Trinity on ninth and Dennis Poor is at the back of the field. That is a disaster for the man who was leading the race, who's also trying to put himself back to contention. Oh, Sam Hanks coming a little bit close there. And Luigi Villaresi and Sam Hanks getting a little bit aggressive as well. And there goes Sam Hanks, goes off the road. As Villaresi makes his way in the fourth because of that. Uh, the race leader, that is Woody Heeks, well, I can imagine he's coming to the pits just now. Is he coming to the pits? Yep, there he goes into the pits and he slows down the drivers ahead of him as well. Unbelievable from Willie Heeks there. Completely slow down to the leader. And look at look at that look what happened to his teammates. His teammates uh, definitely suffered because of it. He was defending the position well and he was he carried the pits ahead of everyone else. And then Willie Heeks completely slowed him down. So that is a really unfortunate that's Jordan Drivers Heath getting a little bit of a nudge from Luigi Villaresi. So the biggest gainer is Luigi Villaresi. Started ninth, he's into second. Then it's Sam Hanks, the next biggest gainer. Started seventh, and he's in the lead of the race. McGrath and Brown have gained five positions each, starting tenth and eighth respectively. The biggest loss is, well, as expected, Willie Heeks, who started from first, and he's at the back of the field now. Of course, Sam Hanks is still trying to get his first win of the season. He's had two second place finishes and three third place finishes this, of the season. And Villaresi has got the joint most race wins this season so far. The other driver being Jim McGrath, who's won the last three races in a row. Both oval races and the Le Mans race. That's put him ahead of everyone else in the championship by 13 points. Taking a look back at the race leaders, they start the penultimate lap of the race. Was, was there time for comparison? 58.1, 57.8, so Vila Resi cutting another three tenths of Sam Hanks. The gap's now six tenths per second, but would it be enough for the Italian to get past him to try and take the race win of this reverse grid race? And it's been and it has been quite a close contest between these two drivers. However, it's fair to say that the winner of this reverse grid race around Australia is going to be indeed Sam Hanks coming across the line to take his first race win of the season. Um, an impressive job, the first driver to win a race in F1 and F2. Vila Resi takes second, Jim McGrath will take the final podium in third. Sam Alan Brown just missing out, it's going to be in fourth. Andrew Simon's fifth. Tarufi managed to get past Hans Stuck. Hans Stuck is going to get his first revert. He's going to get uh, some decent points for himself. Hans Stuck sounds more. Uh, more Street Young gets the last point in eight. Dennis Poor missing out for the first time of the season. Uh, well, first for first grid to race of the season where he doesn't score a point. As we wait for the last drive to cross the line, that is Willie Heeks 
for West Germany. What a close finish between the top two drivers. Six tenths per second separating them. Six seconds separate the top three drivers. It is a double podium for the United States of America. They must be absolutely delighted with this result. Alan Brown comes from fourth. Andrew Simon fifth. Peter Trophy sixth. Hans Stuck from West Germany gained two points for himself. And Morris Trintillon from France gained the final point. So... Will the main race be just as exciting? Well, we're going to jump in and find out. So here we are for the main race around the Australian track with Alan Brown Pole be the rest of second and Jim McGrath third. Of course, Jim McGrath is ahead of Beard Tarufi by 17 points in the race and Tarufi down seventh. With up to 25 points up for grabs, the only two people that could get ahead of McGrath if he was to score no points are Tarufi and Vila Resi. Although both of them would have to win this race. Well, Villarissi will have to win the race and Terufi will have to get a minimum of second to get ahead of Jim McGrath. So without further ado, let's get into this race and see what happens. Okay, so we focus on Alan Brown. So here we go and we are underway. And it seems to be a pretty good start there for the two drives at the front, but it looks like Villaresi got an even better start and Villaresi is going to take the lead of this race, with both American drivers sitting in second and third still, having a bit of a, bit of a, bit of a collision there. As Villaresi is the fast lap of the race, a 58.2. The question is, will anyone be able to beat that time during the course of this race? As we go on board with Pierre Turufi, who is chasing the two Frenchmen of Andrew Simon and Morris Trintillon, as he wants to try to keep his title contention alive, besides Jim McGrath getting three wins and a third place finish in the last four races they've done, where it's including the Le Mans race, both oval races and the reverse grid race around Australia. Pierre Tarufi really needs to up his game if he wants to get himself back into the lead of the championship. But here comes Sam Hengster to try and make a move on Alan Brown. This is his chance to try and get into second place. But it looks like he's just going to miss out. As Vila Resi opens the gap to just about three seconds ahead of Alan Brown. Vila Resi not messing around, wanting to make sure, try and get try and close in on McGrath if he possibly can as well get ahead of his teammate Tarufi in the standings. I don't think we've had really much of the way possession of oh, actually we've had possession of changes. Tarufi and Heeks the only ones who have changed who have not changed positions at all. Everyone else either gained one or lost one. And the rest is in the fastest time, 58.1 seconds as we start lap 9 of 33. Uh, on 90 points, so if he gets the race win, he'll only be 3 points behind. And look at this, this is Sam Hanks and Alan Brown going out again. But it looks like Sam Hanks has finally got the pass, and off goes Alan Brown off the track. Nearly catching out uh, McGrath there. Thankfully, slow down in time. Now this might jumble up the order a little bit. So if we're going to have contact again from the back. And Jim McGrath dropped to 5th as Trintion breaks his way into 4th place. Well, that was a, uh, quite a turn of events. <coughs> Somehow it's this way in a second, and Jim McGrath losing out to Morris Trintignon. And uh, Sam Hanks sets the pass up the race at 58.1, so he's definitely closing in on Villaresi. So Villaresi might end up being nervous, but look at this, Villaresi is nearly caught up to the bat marker of Willie Heats. Just can just about see him in the distance. So that's about 5 seconds a lap uh, with um, separating them if you're racing about 5 seconds a lap faster than Heeks. Not as fast as Hank, so it's Hank sets the new fastest lap, 58.0. Look at the good speed of the race, though, trying to find his way through Heeks. Will he be able to get through? And he does manage to put Heeks one lap down. Of course, Alan Brown has had one second place finish, Dennis Pruitt had two second place finishes. And Villaresi is in the pits. In the pits goes Luigi Villaresi. And Sam Hanks is going to stay out. 
So the question is, will the dealer accident looks, he looks like he is going to try and save him? But here comes Alan Brown into the pits, but most of the people are staying out, so it's only dealer I see Brown that's pitting the slap. Okay, here comes Sam Hanks into the pits, he goes. But it's third place be the rest he's gonna come into the pits to slap a bit. And here goes be the rest he takes retakes the lead of the race, treating on the graph, Simon and Terufi all come into the pits together. Will Hanks come out second? Or will other people go ahead? So Hanks comes out second, Trintion's coming out third. Terufi goes into fourth. There goes Alan Brown coming out. It just looks like they're coming out just ahead of Terufi. So Terufi drops to fifth, and you see on sixth, McGrath drops to seventh. Now here comes Hans stuck into the pits. He's better be passed by Dennis Poor for eighth place. So the biggest loss is McGrath started third, he's currently down to seventh. And the other big loser is Alan Brown started from pole, he's down to fourth. The biggest gainer is Trinity on, starts six, he's up to the third, then it's Hanks, who starts fourth, he's up into second place. Well the Heek's the only driver who starts who's still in the position we starts, which is last. Uh, I think I think it'll reduce the lead by about three. And look at this. oh Terufi and uh, Brown had a bit of an incident. Okay, let's get a replay in that and see what happened there. Looking the leaderboard and the shenanigans happened. Let's see. Was there contact between them? Oh, they def well, they definitely went side by side, so that was a bit aggressive there from Terufi. I think Terufi might get a penalty for shoving Brown off like that. Be an interesting uh, predicament if that was to happen. Well, that's be the case. So 58.3 is. Be the race he's last time. What about Sam Hanks? Will Sam, can Sam Hanks close in a bit? Try and keep Trinity on behind him for the rest of the race. And oh, Alan Brown's gone off and Alan Brown's stopped. Okay, Alan Brown's off. It looks like he's out of the race. What happened to Alan Brown? Okay, looks like contact between him and Andrew Simon. Going around the corner, oh, there was a tangle. And Alan Brown just lost, and that is him out of the race. And you can see the rest, he pushes hard. Sam Hanks getting the fast start now, 57.8, a very, very fast time from the American. However, it will not be enough for Hanks because he is still over 20 seconds behind the race leader of Vila Resi. Looks like Vila Resi is just going to miss out laughing Dennis Poor, but it doesn't really matter as Vila Resi just got a couple of cars left to go and Vila Resi will come across and take his fourth win of the season. So there's Luigi Vila Resi about to come across the line, takes the win on the Australian main race in F2 as we wait for everyone else to finish. And here you have it, the official race results. Vila Resi takes the win, 19 seconds ahead of Sam Hanks, Gene Tion just a few seconds behind third, Terufi and Simon 4th and 5th, Jim McGrath 6th, Dennis Poor 7th, Hans Stuck and Willie Heeks the last finishers, 1 and 2 laps down respectively, and Alan Brown DNFing on lap 26. So, with that exciting race out of the way, it's now time for the F1 race. And so here we go for the grid around Australia. It is Chuck Seuss in the pole position with Jolly Clays in an impressive second place for the second time this year. Chico Landy impressive third with Rui Fisher in fourth. His teammate De Graffery fifth, Gonzalez sixth, followed by Rutman and Robert Manzon on row four. Right for top ten is Mike Hawthorn and championship leader Alberto Ascari. Then it's Ken Wharton and Sean Bear on row six, followed by Ascari's rival Farina and Tony Allman. Then it's Fritz Reese and Roger Lauren down in row eight, followed by Rudolf Krauss finally qualifying with Crespo in nine in eighteenth. Sorry, Flintsman nineteenth, Bianco twentieth, and Alex Clodwig and Vandeloof still yet to qualify for a race as they did not qualify. So, can Alberto Ascari hold on to his lead in the championship? Will Farina catch him in the championship? Or will anyone else pose a challenge to the Italians? Let's get into this race and find out. 
So here we are for the race around Australia for the F1 uh, Grand Prix. We chose to do some pole position and Joy Cleese on his return has qualified second. Giacolani will refresh it on the second row of the grid. The two championship leads, the two Italian drivers of Ascari and Farina are down in 10th and 13th. This is uh, Ste Chuck Stevens has got a good chance to try and jump ahead of both of them to take the lead of the championship. With 20 of the 22 cars on the grid, let's go underway and see what happens. And we are underway and it looks like it was a very good start there for Joy Clay as he takes the race lead already. The first of 65 laps and so Clay leads, steals the second brief, Bestia gets ahead of Vladdy into third. We'll put the foil of the car back into the pits and we'll focus back on the front of the, of the race as Chad Stevenson tried to chase down the Belgian to try and regain the race lead. Fisher third, Landy fourth, Gonzalez fifth, Graffin Reed's down six, Mansell seventh, Rutman eighth, Ascari makes his way up to ninth, and Mike Hawthorne rounding off your top ten as they come round the left handers. Caused some many, this caused a few problems in the F2 race for both the reverse and main races, but it looks like everyone is going to get through safely, but he is still struggling to get past Kim Wharton. Now, Kim Wharton is fourth for the championship. He's the top driver who has finished, who's got less than 100 points. As Rui Fisher sets the fast lap of the race in third position. A good job there from the Swiss man who has been uh, has been the driver that Team Switzerland has been relying on for the points in the nation's table. As they're coming down to the tight left hand of this, Chico Landy, fourth, going a little bit wide there. That's going to help. Um, Joker from Gonzalez to try and get the position. And it was going to start side by side. There's a bit of bumping there between them, but it looks like Joker from Gonzalez is going to get his nose in and he's going to take the possession off Chico Landy. So Gonzalez making his way to fourth position. Joy Clay sets the fastest time at 56.8, so he's upping his pace a little bit. And look at this Chico Landy fights back and Chico Landy retakes. Uh, that fourth possession of the Argentine. And where's the Argentine's teammate? 17. So I'm pretty sure there'll be plenty of action later in the race. It's just a little bit uh, still. Oh, Chico Landy saying the fastest lap of the race. Uh, good job from for Team Brazil with Chico Landy. Chico Landy, all, of course, has um, been giving Brazil all their points in the nation's table, as he's the only Brazilian to score points. And he's in the top 10 in the Challenger standings with two podiums this season. One in the Netherlands and the other one at the Le Mans race. So a very impressive season he's had for himself and for Team Brazil in general. His teammate Bianco has not, sorry, been, has not been successful. He's only scored points in the Netherlands and in the Oval race that so puts him 21st in the standings out of 26 drivers. So it's not exactly been a stellar season for him in general. And now Alberto Ascari, the championship leads fight the fastest time. So Alberto Ascari needs uh, his fight side up to his pace. And he's still going to try to run in front of him. He is five and a half seconds away from the leaders, so he still needs to try and find a way past the American. Otherwise, his fastest lap will be for naught. And the top three try is separated by less than 10 seconds. So it's still quite close in, in the, the majority. Mike Hawthorne is saying the fastest lap now at 56.4 as he's chasing down Alberto Ascari for a ninth position. But it looks like he's dropping back as well. Check the um, who's made the biggest gains and losses. So, oh no. There we go. So, the, okay, so everyone's at least gained one position or lost a position. There's nothing. Uh, nothing more than that. And lap 11, look at this Joy Clayton club to the bat markers. So, let's see how Joy Clayton is going to be able to handle game through. There's, all quite, uh, there's three of them as well. Oh, Giuseppe Farina and Wharton. And, oh! We just see Wharton go off into the wall there, and that is him out of the race. What happened to Ken Wharton? That, that was. Um, that was unexpected. Let's see, what's their contact? Oh, Mike, 
Earth. Um, like Hawthorne went wide, they shot there ahead of them. Did Freena try to make a pass? Yeah, oh, he was nudged. Oh, one part, one half his car went airborne, so that's explicitly what happened. So Giuseppe Freena did nudge him off, but looks like it might have been just a racing incident. So look at this, trying to get past all the bat markers. Past Flinterman, but he's got. We love Kraus from East Germany and Gino Bianco from Brazil to try and pass. Okay, everyone's through safely. Oh no, Johnny Clays has gone sideways there. And look at that, Chuck Stevenson saying thank you very much. I will take that race lead off you, Clays. But Clays is having none of it and Clays smashed a somehow old obsession. But here comes Chuck Stevenson. And no, Chuck Stevenson has indeed dived his way to the front. Oh, contact there between him and Bianco though. But there we go, Chuck Stevenson retakes the lead of the race after losing it at the start. It's probably sensible, it's Chuck Stevenson saying the fast slap at 55.8. We've had an overtake somewhere, oh Gonzalez has passed Chico Landy. I don't know when that happened, I'm guessing it was while lapping the bat markers. There comes Gonzalez. Oh no, he's, oh no, he hasn't got breached the background, so Landy must have gone, uh, made a, a mistake at some point and went off the road. And here goes Bianco and Kraus there. Oh, okay, so the two drives here have been lapsed. Bianco and Kraus are going at it again. And Kraus managed to hold the possession, but that's not done Lando any help. So good job to Brazil. Ooh. Yep, yeah, and look, oh no, we've got a problem there. Still went off. Oh, I don't think Mantle had gone off, or no, they're still moving. Okay. So I thought one. Of, I thought one of the French drivers had gone off into the wall, but not clearly I'm wrong. But here, look at Alberto Ascari now. Thanks to the Batman, Ascari finally might get a chance to make some passes to try and get some points to stay ahead of Stevenson in the championship. Is Stevenson? Is eight seconds ahead of second place, Johnny Cleese. And Chuck Steve's saying the fastest lap at 55.7. So a very fast time there from the American. And there's Clay's 57.5, so a couple of seconds slower. And we've got Rotman going awfully sideways, and Alberto Ascari manages to pass the, the American into eighth place, so he's now gonna chase. The next race chasing is Robert Manson in 7th place. We're going to still focus on and we've got an incident. Rudolf Kraus. Okay, so he was off but hang on, he got dashed his car. Um, okay, let's take a look at Kraus. I just couldn't actually see what happened but we'll see what happened to him there. Was there a tango with another driver? Yes, there was. It was with Flinterman, it looked like. We'll go back a bit further. Yeah, that's Flinterman. Call the side, off the track. Okay, so he now drops, he re enters the track at the back of the. at the back. Now, better with Scar, he's saying that that's like 55.4. So he's got a bit of clean air. That's going to help him catch up to Manson. Uh, looking at Stevenson, he's getting close to lapping Prince Reese now, but he went awfully wide there. we go on boards with you recently. There is the West German driver who's about to be lapped. And oh, hell, oh, what's this? Oh, Clay has gone off the track and Fesher takes second place. Hang on, let's get a replay of that. That was uh, questionable. Uh, Fesher, Fesher, there he is. That was a little bit questionable from the Swiss driver. Okay, this is what happens here. Goes into the inside. Oh, contact there. Left hander. Contact again. Fisher did not give Clay any room there. I think Fisher could be in trouble there. That was a. That was. Okay, may not think Clay's had the race, thankfully, but it was definitely questionable regardless. Gonzalez 4th, Graffin 6, Mansell 7th, Sky 8th, Rutman 9th, and Hawthorne 
10, I remind you who the top 10 choice are. And here comes Trust Youth, no, no, coming up behind Fritz Reese. Put a lap down as we're on lap 23 of 65. The lap's going by quickly. Oh, Stevenson. Oh, my word there. And here's Rudolph. There's Rudolph Krause. He goes awfully wide. Fritz Reese watches on. In fact, look, uh, Fritz Reese looks like he's going to actually try and unlap himself. Oh, no, he's going to back out. That probably is the better decision. Because his time's a 58.8, so his time's a slipping because of these drivers. He's unable to get past. It's Rudy Fisher closing in 55.4, the fast lap of the race as well. And uh, Rudy Fisher's got that is Fritz Ries to lap. Looking at the progress now, who's the, the biggest gainer? Biggest gainer is Bianco, who's gained three positions because he started from the back of the grid. And the biggest losers are Ruckman, Landy, and Krause, who've all lost two positions each. That's a bit of a stale race at the moment, not really much to uh, note other than. It's Fisher closing in on Stevenson for the lead. And we're going to take a stroke Stevenson, try to barge his way through, and try Stevenson's gone off! Stevenson is off into the wall, and I think his impatience has called him out. Yeah, it definitely has. So Chuck Stevenson, out of nowhere, is going to it's out of the race. That is... That is a huge shocker. Yep, there he is. That is him out. And look at that. Josie from Gonzalez, thanks for that. He is now in third possession. Gonzalez, in fact Argent Team Argentina in general have never had a podium finish so this could be his chance to finally get Argent Argentina's first podium. The success eight laps. Oh! Pass, uh, that was Kraus. But that was very very uh, perilous there. That looked like he nearly lost it. I was going to say I jinxed it. Okay, oh, we've had a huge crash! Huge crash from Fisher and Lawrence, and now Fisher looks like he's about to retire from the race. Oh no! What on earth happened there? Okay, go on board with Fisher. Do we try to lap Lawrence? I actually saw two clays out, which is like, oh my god, this has completely shifted things up again. Look at this, really Fisher into the inside. Oh! Huge tangle there between him and Lawrence. Oh, that's definitely a racing incident. But oh my word! So Lawrence out and Fisher has gone out. So Clayton is, new, is now takes the lead of the retakes the lead of the race. Gonzalez now second, Landy third, Graffin Reed fourth, Manson fifth, Ascari gaining sixth possession. This is good news for Italy and for Ascari. And now Farina's in the point position. But Ascari's lead with de as it stands would definitely be well and truly secure off Farina because Farina is behind him. Okay, biggest gainer is Gonzalez. No, no, it's Bianco. <coughs> <coughs> started last and he's now... Well, he's going to gain six possessions now, so he started last and he's going to be 14th. Then the next big gain is, is, is Crespo, who started 18th and he's in 13th. Then after that, Ascari and Gonzalez gained four positions. Oh, and so is Flintman, started 19th, 10th, and 6th respectively. And everyone left in the race has not lost any positions. The only. Oops, that's the wrong button. Sorry about that. So the only big losers, the ones who have retired. I think I'm telling Allman, looks like he's going to try and lap Flintman finally. And Flintman. No, Allman has had a bit of a spin. And that's Allman out. Oh no, Allman. Is he going to get back on the track? Yes, he's back on the track. He, he loses 11th to his teammates. So, more drama right there. Not for the front runners this time, thankfully. Yeah, and now. Oh, and now Allman's gone off. Allman's gone off. He's in, no, Reese has gone off. In, he's into the wall. And that's Reese out of the race. Okay, what happened to Fritz Reeves? Absolute chaos. Okay, here's the West German driver. Trying to lap Flintman. Oh, the same thing happened with his teammate Allman off the track. Then stays into the wall, and that's him out of the race. So that is another retirement. 
It's not front runner, but it's still another retirement. And no, oh no, Johnny Cleese looks like he's in trouble. And look at that, that instance cost him the lead to Gonzalez. So Gonzalez saw that saw that that moment there and he just says Clay says to Clay's, thank you very much. I'll have that lead off you. So Jyoti Fernando Gonzalez could get Argentina's first ever Formula Olympic win. First ever gold medal as well. Yes, there is, and someone spun out. That's Rutman has spun out. Troy Rutman has spun out Flinterman. That was a little unnecessary from the American. That's definitely going to be a penalty for him there. That is a penalty for him indeed. That was completely not needed. And look at that, and now Robert Manson setting the fast lap of the race. Alright, amazing stuff there from Manson. Well, this is definitely turning to a bit of a dirty race. It's definitely penalty session out, and we have just heard back from the organisers. Flinterman was going to have a 10 second penalty. Uh, Fisher's got a 10 second. Well, Flinterman's getting a penalty because of the incident with Hawthorne. Uh, Fish, Rudy Fisher's getting a 10 second penalty for the incident uh, with Cleese, and Rutman with that crash with Flinterman, he's got a 30 second penalty. Of course, Penalty of Flemming won't matter because he's out of the race. Scari getting the fastest lap in 6th place. Surprised there has not, no one has pitted yet. There's two to Graf Reed getting past to get in to, to lap the Argentine. And the Rutman's now set the fastest lap in 7th, 55.1. Yeah, no potential changes, so. And the, okay, Gonzalez comes to the pits. Clay is staying out, Chico Landy is staying out. Okay, so the leader has come into the pits. And no, and now Jean Berra is off. Jean Berra from ninth place has gone off. What happened to Berra? Did Berra have an incident with someone? Okay, so he's behind Bianco. Okay, it must be the next corner is what's happened. But I'm keen to see what happened to him. Oh, three is behind. He's trying to get past. B oh, he tried to get past Bianco. In the wrong angle, and that's and that is better out of the race. So Joey Clay now leads the race. Landy second, Graffney third, Manson fourth, Ascari fifth, Rupp sixth, Austin sends for the eighth. Gonzalez comes out of the pits in ninth place. So John Clay's is in, Landy's in, Graffney's in, Manson's in, Ascari's in, Rutman. He's definitely going to be in. So is Hoth No, Hawthorne's staying out. Farina's in, and Gonzalez, of course Gonzalez is staying out, so Hawthorne takes the lead of the race because he's staying out. Now, who's going to come out first in the pit? Is it Clays is coming out first? Oh, he's just ahead of Landy, literally just ahead. So Clays comes out third, Landy fourth, Graffiti fifth, Rutland sixth, Manza seventh, Ascari drops to eighth, Farina is ninth. Let's run board with the, the Brett, he's into the pits now. And here, well, Borg Gonzalez, he should get past. That's the pet lane right there. Easily makes his way back into the lead of the race. With a 56.2. If we go both Hawthorne, he's coming out of the pits now. He's, he's actually going to get uh, higher than expected. He's going to come out in third. Okay, I, was ex I didn't expect. I, was, I knew Hawthorne. I uh, expect Hawthorne to be like. Uh, nine, so oh, we got a bit of contact between Graf and Reed and Landy there, trying to get into fourth place. So he's uh, surprised that the Brett has managed to get into third place. So all of the top nine drivers are on the lead lap. Let's check everyone's progress now as the race has gone on. Biggest gainer is Bianco in 12th, gained 8 positions. The next biggest gainer is Crespo, start 18th, he's now 11th. And third base gainer Hawthorne started ninth, he is now in third. So, amazing race for some, and some not so much for others, especially in the Team Italy. I mean, eighth and ninth, that's really not a good result for them, especially since how Team Italy have dominated the first seven races of the season. Well, apart from, yeah, the first seven races of the season, they absolutely dominated. And there's Alberto Crespo, he's trying to lap, and this would be. Gio Bianco is trying to lap as well. 
The horse sign has been installed. There, so Graffin Reed's gone awfully wide. Is Graffin Reed going to get back on the track? Oh, he does. He drops all the way back down to ninth. That's so. He's, so he clearly had contact there, and he's dropping down. Let's go replay on Graffin Reed. Did he collide with the bat marker? This Chico. Oh, was it Chico Landy? Yeah, bit of a dive there. Well, that was definitely Graffin's fault there. There was no way he was going to be able to make that move stick. 56.4, the second and third place have done, which I believe is the second floor. And here, and here comes Rutman now trying to make the move on Chico Landy. It's a bit of contact, but Landy holds on to the possession. Good job there from the Brazilian. And there's Robert Manson down in sixth possession as he is chasing down Troy Rutman. It's an average. I'd say it's average for the UK, even though you UK have in the UK have had four podium finishes, including for their first win in the last round. Alberto Sky says fastest time at fifty four point nine, so I believe that's the first time under fifty four in under fifty five seconds. So good showing there from Ascari. And Mike Hawthorne might be a late uh, contender. And look at Farina and Ascari went off there. No, that was not that was not great. And look at Manson. And Rutman in a tussle for fifth, and it looks like Manson is going to push yeah, Rutman down to six. That is not what the United States needs. Team France uh, getting themselves in a late charge. And Ascari sets another fast time of 54.8. If he's trying to catch up to. Now he's trying to catch up to Rutman instead of Manson now. Chico Lani, definitely the, probably one of the biggest overachievers of the season. He's done an amazing job and it looks like Manson has managed to get past Chico Landy, but Chico Landy's off and now Landy's stuck. Oh, and, and Farina has collided with him. Oh no, Chico Landy's off That's because Manson dived in oh, and took him out of the race. So I think, yeah, that, yeah, that is definitely under investigation. So Manson might have just screwed himself by that incident there. And oh my word, United Kingdom game! Oh no, Hawthorne's gone off as well. Those he can blame. Uh, okay, so Hawthorne's off. Now all of a sudden, the two of the front runners have gone off the track. So that is the end of Landy and Hawthorne in a dramatic fashion. This is unbelievable, but. But I don't. But definitely did not look like uh, Clay's pushed them off though. But we'll get a replay just to be sure. As Mazel says, the fastest time of the race. So, uh, so let's go on board with Clay's just to make sense of it all. Did he actually collide with Hawthorne? Okay. Try to find the instant. Okay, there he is. No, that was definitely Hawthorne's own fault. Okay, so Clays is, okay, so Clays is not being, will not definitely not get a penalty. But this here from the organisers, and yeah, they are issuing a 30 second penalty on Manson because of the incident that took out. Yeah, now, oh, drama's from behind. Yeah, yeah, definitely a lot of drama. And, oh, Ascari's now gone off and Rutman's off. Okay, I'm not sure what, what's wrong with the camera. But okay, let's try and uh, get the correct camera and find out what happened. Okay, I don't know what's up with the camera all of a sudden, but okay, so Ascari and Rutman. Okay, let's see here. So Ascari goes into the inside, nudges Rutman, left hander. Ascari goes wide, to, takes Rutman with him. So Ascari didn't. So the scar took himself out, but he definitely had an impact of Rutman going off. So I believe a scar is going to get a penalty. Well, he's definitely under investigation as well. So top five on the lead lap, and the other four are multiple laps down. As Ez Gonzalez starting the penultimate lap of the race, I mean, just from Gonzalez out of nowhere he takes the lead of the race, and he's managed to keep hold of it. And oh. And look at this, Giuseppe Farina has actually been passed by two of the Graffin Reeds, so that's not good for the Italian. So, here we go. And here it comes, Giuseppe Farina Gonzalez comes through the line, 
and takes the gold medal in Australia. What an absolute fantastic performance from him. Well, what a dramatic finish to the race we've had. Joseph Fernand Gonzalez, 22.999 seconds ahead of Clays. Robert Manson will definitely be will definitely drop down to fifth thanks to the penalties. There's Tilly Graffreed will end up getting his first uh, podium of the season in third. Giuseppe Freena will definitely be classified as fourth. And then there's Almond six, Bianco seventh, Crespo eighth, and Ruf Prowse the last finisher down in ninth, getting East Germany's first ever points. And there's Troy Rutman who's not classified, because uh, actually I don't think he will be classified. Nah, because he's two laps, two, sh uh, two laps before 90% of the race is done. And here's the other retirements, Ascari, most notably, Hawthorne, uh, Chuck Stevenson, also a big name to, that'll be, uh, everyone will be disappointed with. So with that out of the way, it's time to check the points tables for the F2, F1 and Nations tables. With such a dramatic race out of the way, it's time to check the F1 standings. Ascari still holds onto the lead, but his teammate Farina is now on the same amount of points. But the number of wins separating them, Ascari with 4, compared to Freenas 2. With Chuck Stevens and Ken Wharton leaving with no points, which definitely has them uh, playing catch up still to try and beat them in the driver's table. With Gonzalez getting his first win of the season and his first win for Argentina, Joy Clay getting his second podium of the season, and Tilo de Graffiri getting his first podium of the season. Over to the F2 standings, they can see only seven people are now mathematically in contention to win the F2 championship. Jim McGrath with a five-point lead over second place Luigi Villaresi, with Pierre Taruffi hanging in third position, which means the top four t uh, drivers are only 21 points, which can make all the difference for the la their last two rounds of the season. Now on to the nation's table, Rudolf Krauss may have got East Germany's first ever points of the season but East Germany are now mathematically out of contention and the Netherlands are also out of contention but thanks to Giuseppe Freire's fourth place finish that puts Italy 60 points ahead of second place in uh, the United Kingdom and France, another big loser in this round, uh, only getting fifth position, are now 64 points behind and even worse, the United States with no points, they are also lost out. So essentially, the three big contenders against Italy for the title all lost out pretty badly here. So, what are my final thoughts after this very, very dramatic weekend? Well, for F1, it is a very, very interesting result with such an unusual podium. With Jose Fernando Gonzalez getting his first win of the season, a second podium for Johnny Clays, and also third place going to Tula de Graffenried, but of course, um, the penalty from Robert Manson put him down behind uh, his rival, which was Giuseppe Farina, which meant Italy were still the big winners as of the four big teams in contention to win the championship, while well, Italy basically won out thanks to Farina getting fourth, with Manson only getting fifth. And a double DNF from America and a double DNF from the United Kingdom meant they really lost out on uh, the contention of closing in on them despite the fact they had a really, really good advantage going into this weekend after both Italian drivers barely were struggling to make top 10. But they can still win the championship, so they can bounce back from uh, what will be to them a very bad weekend. But with the next round coming up, who will win the next round? Will it be another unusual podium, or will it be the more, the more predictable kind? Well, hope you look forward to it as much as I am, and we'll jump in together to find out. So thanks, thanks for watching, and I look forward to the next round.